Okay, we're on Shavit Perik Yud, Mishnah Aleph. First Mishnah in the last chapter of Shavit. We now turn, the Mishnah now turns its attention to Shemitat Ksafim. Shemitat Ksafim, in a nutshell, means that when the end of the Shemitah year comes along, that a person is obligated, required, to forgive outstanding loans. This is not blanket any loans, it's certain loans in certain situations, but in general the Torah says explicitly, that you should forgive a loan. This is based on Dvarim Perik, uh, Perik Tedvav. So let's just see, it's a, it's a long chapter, we're going to read the whole thing. At the end of every seven years, you should make a Shemitah. This is a Dvar Shemitah, this is what it means. Shamot Kolbal Mashe Yado. We'll just use the English here because it's just easiest. Every creditor shall release that which he has lent to his neighbor. Asher Yeshe Berei Ehu. He shall not exact it of his neighbor and his brother, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu has called Shemitah. So it's explicit in the Torah, Shamot Kobal Masher Yado. Asher Yasher Berei Eyu. If I loaned money, I have to be Shamot. I have to pull back my hands from the money that I owed him. Okay? This is a different point, but the Nanji you can. But that which is from your brother, you should release, you should pull back. Okay, and then we're, there, there is going to be more, but this is the basic es- essence of Shemitat uh, Ksafim, the obligation to, uh, to, uh, to forgive loans at the end of the, at the, end of the Shemitah mm-hmm. year. Okay, uh, the Mishnah is going to now discuss this in, in some detail. Says the Mishnah, Shvi'it Mishametet Tamilve Beshtar Veshelo Beshtar. So which loans does Shvi'it cancel? It cancels whether it's a loan with a shtar, a contract, which was considered much more serious, vishalo bishtar, or something that was even a, a, a verbal loan, a handshake loan. Either of those loans, shmita is bishamete. So the question is the following. The way I interpreted shbishtar, vishalo bishtar, it means any type of loan bishtar. But the Gemara in, in Daflamid Zayin of Gitin, says, who notes that there's a huge machloket about this issue. It's not entirely clear, entirely clear that that's, that, that, that the way we read it is true. It's actually, the way I just read it is a huge machloket. I'll read you the Gemara. It's not. Hashvit mishametet et ha-malva bein bishtar bein bishalo bishtar. So we have this Mishnah, Gemara quotes uh, exactly what we said. That shvi'it, that uh, shmita is mishametet et ha-malva. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger. It cancels the loan, whether it's bishtar or shalo bishtar. Here we go. That should be helpful. Okay, and then there's a beautiful piece right after this. Okay, uh, Rav Shmuel, the Amri Chavai. So Rav Shmuel said the following: Bishtar, the term Bishtar in the Mishnah, Bein Bishtar, Bein Bishlor Bishtar. Bishtar means Shtar Sheyeshvo Achrayut. Shtar, that's a specific type of Shtar, a, a contract that has Achrayut Nechasim, i.e., it places a lien on on property. Exactly like the best example that you can think of is a mortgage. It's a loan in a contract that places a lien on property. If you don't pay me back, I take the property. That is the most significant, the most serious kind of kind of loan that there is. So that's what it meant, bishtar. Shelo bishtar, but if there's no loan, she'en bo achrayut nechassim. It's talking about a case where there isn't achrayut nechassim. That's the impression, that it's, shelo bishtar means it's a shtar that doesn't have achrayut nechassim. And therefore, kol shekein mal ve'alpe. Certainly a, a verbal loan. So, i.e., let's go find, I made you a little chart, okay? Rav and Shmuel said, Bishtar, the term Bishtar, that refers to, Shtar sheyesh bo achayut nechassim. Shalom Bishtar, when the Mishnah says Shalom Bishtar, that refers to, Shtar she'en bo achayut nechassim. And certainly, so if both of, if Shemitah cancels the most serious loan, and it cancels the next most serious loan, certainly Shemitah cancels a mal a verbal loan. Back to the Gemara. But, Rabbi Yochanan, here we are. Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, Rabbi Yochanan ben Lakish, we say, no, the Amit Shavayu, Bishtar, the word Bishtar means, Shtar she'en bo achayut nechassim. It, it refers to a regular contract, not a contract with a lien on property, but a regular contract, a contract for a loan, your car loan. Shelo Bishtar, but Shelo Bishtar means mal ve'al peh. That's verbal, that's what it sounds like. Aval Shtar she'yesh bo achayut nechassim, eno m'shame. But, if there is a lien on property, then Shemitah is not Mishamet. Shemitah does not cancel that kind of loan. The loan is associated with the property. And if you think about it logically, we can understand this. 
it's not just something that's owed. The property is considered almost as if it belongs already to the lien holder. And you can understand why, the way it depends on how you like visualize or conceptualize loans, you could understand why in a certain case like that, why it wouldn't be canceled based on the, on Shemitah. So here we have Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Shlaki, they say, Shtar she'en bo'achroyu nechassim. Bishtar means, Shtar she'en bo'achroyu, meaning a loan with, which has no lien in, with, a, with a contract. Shelo bishtar, if there's no shtar, means ma'al v'apeh, lo bishtar. Aval, shtar she'yesh bo'achroyu nechassim e'en ha'meshamei. So it's a huge machloket. Is Shemitah canceled? Does it cancel everything, like Rabbi Shemuel? Or does it only cancel loans that don't have a lien on property? Like Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Shlakish. I have to show you the end of the Gemara because it's a powerful lesson about Psak. Okay, so remember we saw Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Shlakish said that if you have a Shtar, Sheyeshbo Achrayut, Shemitah is not Mishamet, and i.e., the lien holder can collect his loan after, after, uh, after Shemitah is over. Okay, says the Mishnah, Ahu Shtara, the Haviktib Be Achrayut Nechasim. There was a loan that had a chayyut nechasim, that had a lien. Atzalak made the Rav Asi. So Rav Asi, they brought it to Rav Asi, and they said it was. And Shmita happened, right? The Shmita year happened. So they brought it to Rav Asi. Amar le mishamet or ain't mishamet? Does it cancel or not? Amar le ain't mishamet. So they they didn't like that answer. So he said ain't mishamet. So therefore you have to pay. Shav gave out to the Kamei Rabbi Yochanan. So they allowed, they left Rav Asi. They went to Rav Yochanan. So remember, Rav Yochanan said in our chart, Rav Yochanan said shtar ma shtiyesh bo achoyut nechasim ain't mishamet. You have to pay. So they went to Rabbi Yochanan because they knew what he said. Shmita cancels the loan. And the guy didn't like this because he wanted to be paid. After Rabbi Asi came to Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Asi went to Rabbi Yochanan, is if you have a loan with, with a lien on property, does it, is it canceled or not? He says it's canceled. Rabbi Asi said, One second, you Rabbi Yochanan say, no, no, this is an incredible answer. I just I, I had to read this piece of the Gemara because it's incredible. I'm relay. So Rabbi Yochanan said to him, "The chibit neishu anu midamin naase mase," because we imagine, because we have a theory, because we have a svara, we're actually going to change the law. And he said, "Look at Rashi." Anu midamin nir ebe inenu ukemidumim anu ken velo shamanu mi rabotenu. We imagined the law, but we didn't hear it from our rabbanim. Naase mase lo si mamon biadayim. It's one thing in the Beit Midrash. But we're not going to change the halacha unless we have a misorah from a rabbanim. So it's so fascinating. Even Rabbi Yochanan, the great Amor Rabbi Yochanan, he said you have to have a connection, you have to have a misorah. You can't just make up halacha because you think that it's true. You have to follow the misorah. And even though I understand the Mishnah to say that shtar she sheish ba achoyim nechasim eno meshamei, I don't pass in that way the masse. I only pass in that way in theory. I mean, there's, there's a there's a long history of great Rasha yeshivot who were reluctant to pass for that reason, for this exact reason, because even though you have a theory, and even though it seems to make sense to you, it's not part of the halachic masara. Let's go back to our Mishnah because I'm already way long. Says the Mishnah, Hakafatacha. So these are loans. Loans are canceled. Not all loans, maybe, not according to everyone. Halachic will be possible. All loans are canceled by Shemitah. Even Bishtar, even Bachoyim. Hakafatacha nurut enamashamet. I go to the store. This used to be in the Makolet. It was very popular in Israel in the Makolet. You go to the Makolet, and he'd write you down. You know, because he wouldn't pay every single time. But in this case, it's not that he wouldn't pay any business at time. We'll see. You go and you say, you know, okay, I mean, I'm going to take the bread and I can't really pay you now. He says, no problem, pay me the next time. But if you transferred or you, you know, it turned into a loan, and then Shemitah came, the end of the Shemitah year came, then it is canceled. So what's the, what is 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 the condition? How do you turn and oh, you owe the grocer for your groceries into a loan? It's an interesting question. So the Bartonira says, Shechishavi makone uzikafam alem b'milva. You made an accounting. So I remember when we used to have a makolet here in Yabin Yamin, the very beginning, even when I was in Shalavim, they had a makolet, they would do that. They had a card. So they would write down. But every now and then, the guy would say, okay, you know, like, it's time to pay up. And then that's when you would add up. That turns into a loan. Harizim mishamet. Rabbi Yudah Omer, Rabbi Yudah says, no, are we shown, are we shown mishamet? Each, the way it works is the following. He says, the first time you take it, Okay, the first time you take, you know, you go to the grocery store, say 300 checkout, 300 dollars, whatever it is. Okay, that's not a loan. That's hakafa. But the second time, when you go the second time, you say another 200 checkout. Rabbi Yudah says, well, then the first 300 now becomes a loan. You owe him. It's not, it's not just that you're, you're going to pay for the, pay for the groceries. We don't pass on Rabbi Yehuda. Let's say I hired a worker. I hired my gardener to do gardening. I owe him money for the work. 
ואם עשה הוא מרווה, הרי זה משמץ. אבל אם הוא אומר, תשמע, כל הזמן הוא אומר, תשמע, 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 You owe me money for the garden. I said, I know, I, I, I know. I just, let's just make, we have to make our payments. We have to work into a loan. Then I raise the Meshamet. Then it becomes a loan because it's not money owed for work. Rabbi Yossi, Omer Rabbi Yossi says, Ko melacha sheposeket bashvi'it meshametet. So it's a machloket. Some say this means, well, let's translate. Any melacha, any work kind of work that stops on shvi'it, meshametet, because he's no longer working. So some say that this means that the types of work that are no, not, you're not allowed to do on shvi'it. Other, interpre- other excuse me, interpretations say, no, it, if the guy was working up until Shvi'id, and now the Shvi'id year, you're not, before the Shemitah comes, before the end of the Shemitah cycle comes, he's no longer working for you. Then, since he's no longer working for you, he, you owe him his loan. But, but if he's still working for you, then it's like, you know, when I hire a guy to do a job, it's a process. You pay him at the end. And therefore, it's not a loan in Eina Mishamethet. And uh, Shemitah does not cancel what you owe him. Either way, we don't pass them like Rabbi Yossi or, or like Rabbi Yehuda to the best of my en alacha to Rabbi Yehuda and also en alacha to Rabbi Yossi. Okay, I'm way over. I don't know if way over. This is a longer Mishnah. Just fascinating. I just found the commentary of Rabbi Yochanan fascinating, so we'll stop here. If you have any comments or questions, you can always, as always, email me at rspolter at gmail.com. I will dedicate the learning to the memory of my father, Rav Simcha Ben Yitzchak Kalman. Have a great day.